Let's get our results about this draft. Let's do it. I'm excited. I'm excited. We took a minute. To, you know, we took a minute or two there before looking. <sighs> did we strike gold? Did our scouts do a good job, or did we just blow it? Especially getting rid of Mirko Mueller. Uh, let's take a look. We start off in goal. Okay. So Makarov's still in 84. Whitney's gotten better. Krog was two and a half star. Not amazing. Um, all things considered, our goaltending isn't that bad. I do think, in terms of what we're going to look to do here, Martin Jones has to go. Uh, Jones has to go. It'll be Makarov, Whitney at the NHL level, OJ, and then we're going to sign Markinen and Krogh for now. Um, just to see, and I do need the sim to the proper day. Maybe there'll be a little bit more player development, but just to see if those two guys can develop because they don't have much value, but if they develop, they could be something for us. They could be, they could be. We're going to have some big RFAs this year too. All right, yeah, so those contracts are up. So actually, we don't even have to trade Jones. He was on a one-year deal. So we will qualify Makarov. Jones can go. We will qualify Brandon Whitney. He'll be the backup. Um, we will sign Markinen to his ELC. And actually, because of that, I won't sign Krog because he won't get any playing time. Let's just go with those four. And that should be fine. And again, injuries are off. So it puts Krogan in a weird spot, but Markinen's the, the better guy to kind of build around. Defensively, Myers, McNabb's looking great. Walser's looking great. Look at this defense. There's a chance Justin Falk gets dropped. McElrath as well. Subs, what's up, man? McAllister's up to a 78. Or Myers a 76 at 18 years old. The 26th overall pick, Charlie Ortmeier. Very, very good. He might be better than who the hell we picked up second overall. Charlie Ortmeier looking good. Dean, ooh, okay, yeah, Dean Vigilante. 74 at 19, three-star red. For the th in fairness, a third-round pick, though, being a 74 overall is pretty good. Not the best potential in the world, but, you know. Uh, placement came to 24. Fair place. enough. Shout out to Minnesota <laughs> Sauce, I imagine. It's Minnesota <laughs> Sauce. Let me know if I'm wrong. Welcome in. <laughs> Welcome to the fun. Lukowicz! 73 overall at 19 years old. Four star gold. Oh, dude, our defense. Our defense. This guy was worth trading the goalie and the other player to, uh, to Winnipeg for at the trade deadline. That worked out really, really well. That is the Winnipeg pick. He's a phenomenal skater. Doesn't play very physically, but yeah, Phil Lukowicz. And we still have another guy, another couple of guys to go, not even just one. Ola Henriksen, 64 overall at 19 years old, but also four stars. That is who we traded Mirko Mueller for. Um, and he is on a better point pace than Mueller. So he's not quite as good as I was hoping he'd be, but he is still pretty damn good. And again, another great skating defenseman. Wow, this is nuts. Uh, Bistrom is an RFA. There's Scott. Langfield at one and a half stars. Artukin's not that good. Serge St. Denis, three-star red. Lawton Dress, Alexandrov, the enforcer. Aspar, Muscle Weights, a two and a half star. Can I look up Maldi in the power forward? I don't remember what team he went to. So all in all, I mean, that second round pick, or the second overall pick, not quite a home run, but it wasn't a brutal mistake either. Uh, this defense looks awesome. Two, three, Calgary. Here, let me see if I can find him. 68 overall, 19, three and a half green. So not someone where I'm like, oh my God, we missed that guy. Probably better than who we took, but still. So one, two, three, four. I mean, five, six, right? I don't think we have space for Falk or McElrath at this stage. I don't think we do. Like, McCaffrey.
Alistair and Zadorov are ready to go at the NHL level. Like, now's the time for them to try to make the jump. Justin Falk, who is very good, but again, wants $4.5 million a season. Very, very good defensive defenseman, but he's not a big point getter. I think we're going to let go of Justin Falk, um, who, again, we kind of knew was a one-season rental. The big question is, what do I do with McElrath? Who is at least an RFA. You're moneyballing the hell out of the series. It's great, isn't it? Again, McElrath. I'd like to trade away his rights. I don't want to lose him for nothing, but his value might be low. Um, but he takes so many goddamn penalties. <laughs> we will qualify McElrath. But our defense... For the upcoming season, is looking like Myers and McNabb, Walzer and Loxo, and then Zadorov and McAllister. And we'll try to trade McElrath. In the AHL, Jerome Gautier LeDuc is getting better. He's a toss up right now. There's Ortmeyer. Who is Canadian. So we will not be signing him. Because he's not going straight to the NHL. And he can't go to junior. So he's in that middle ground. We're not going to sign him though. Otherwise it would probably be Loxo. That's on the outs. It'd probably be Loxo that's on the outs. Um, I will consider it based off of his trade value. We'll look in a minute. Um, there's Dean Vigilante. Who's also Canadian. We definitely won't be signing him right now. Can't go to the AHL because you said junior. Well, thank you for correcting me, even though you knew what I meant. Uh, Lukowicz. Also Canadian. So, won't be signing him. Uh, Ola Henriksen will be signed. And we are going to prioritize his playing time in the AHL. Um, but yeah, given he's 19 years old and Swedish, he's being signed. 100%. 100%. Uh, Ludwig Bistrom. I don't know yet. We'll see if we keep him. He is an RFA. We'll see if we keep him. Uh, Evan Scott. Probably going. Sorry, Evan. But, uh, you're out of here. Go back all the way to Bistrom here. Uh, Stan Wiggle's not looking that good. Langfield. St. Denis will obviously be Canadian. Yeah, so we can't sign him right now. Not until next season. There's Dyson Mayo, who is also in the conversation of keeping, especially with this potential, even though he is 20. Uh, Ruslan Alexandrov is already signed. Uh, there is a very good chance he's going to be traded because his overall is too damn low. Alex Carrier. And a muscle light. Let's see. So if we keep JGL, Bistrom, and Mayo, that leaves one spot for Carrier or Musselwhite. Given that Musselwhite's only a point lower and a year younger, I don't think we're going to sign Alex Carrier. We're going to let him go. And we will go with uh, JGL and Bistrom. Bistrom, Bistrom, and then uh, Musselwhite with Mayo. So our AHL defense is about to take a pretty big hit in terms of current caliber. And then if anything changes in free agency, there's always other people I can sign or trade away or anything like that. So for the moment, we want to lock in the players that we have now, just in case there's not anybody to sign. It's called future proofing. On the right wing side, Mersak's deal is up. Ben Hanowski's deal is up. Pakarainen's deal is up. Um, all of these guys are fine, <laughs> but nobody that I am uh, beholden to at this stage. I'd rather see who else is out there. Again, someone like Ben Hanowski, you can get pretty much every free agency. So Jan Mersak will let go of for now. Ben Hanowski will let go of for now. Iro Pakarainen will let go of for now. 
Mark Mankari, you can go for now. Uh, Jonas Donskoy, you can go for now. <laughs> Logan Shaw, you can go for now. Greg Hoffman, you can go for now. Uh, Mark Lebriere, it's going to be French-Canadian. <sighs> the Russian power forward, Tolpeko, not that great. Yeah, we didn't do too well on the winger side of things over the last two drafts, did we? we didn't do too hot. Briere is going to be French Canadian. Yeah. Two and a half red for Tolpeco. That's just. He could get better. It's unlikely. All right. Let me see here. So if I look at this team, give me Uno Momento here. Kind of write down like an organizational depth chart. We know Mark Stone's going to have a spot at the NHL level. I am going to sign Ruslan Tolpeko for now. Uh, and slot him into the AHL. See if we can brute force him into development. Uh, David Crabb was American, right? Nope, he's Canadian, so we won't be signing him. Uh, Jeffrey Witt sucks. And then there's Nick Baptiste, who... Uh, Sucks, unfortunately, but really has no trade value, despite that potential, because it's red. So right wing side is pretty rough. Left wing side, we brought back Drayson Bowman again, and again, I'm going to let him go for now. Um, so at the NHL level, left wing side, we're definitely going to have Barbashev. We are definitely going to have Vladimir Safronov take that jump. Gerby's out. Dreisaitl and Balmer. Honestly, I think that's probably going to fill out that left side unless we find somebody else in free agency. We can pencil in Dreisaitl and Balmer on the fourth line. Uh, 20 year old Marcel Daniel. That's what's going on. Uh, this dude's 20 years old, so he won't be NHL ready, but he can be signed. Oh, Kavanaugh's a little bit disappointing. That's a shame. Going to have a pissy fourth line. Well, dry side, it will be third line at least. Um, so Daniel will be probably top line left wing in the AHL. That's not too bad. Um, Clarence Cavanaugh was Swiss. We are going to pretty much immediately get him into the AHL to try to brute force some development. He does have a very good overall at 18 years old, so that's good. John Scott is probably on the outs at this stage, unless I can make room for him in the AHL, which right now it's looking rough because we're also factoring in Saprikin. Then there's John Scott, who is at least under contract. And then Beaverson. So yeah, Scott can stay, but he's a healthy scratch. Beaverson's in on the left wing side. Blake Lisak, 58 overall at 18 years old, three and a half star gold. He's Canadian, so I don't have to worry about him right now, thankfully. Bradley Pruden also sucks. So for the most part, left wing side's taken care of organizationally. And then for our centers. <sighs> well, don't we have some decisions to make? Jesus. All right. This will be fun. Let's start from the bottom. Got the Jimmy Cross. Um, how's the answer? We haven't been on FIFA for a little bit. Uh, people have really been digging the 14 side. So, there is Colby Cave. I don't know if I can slot him into a spot here. I mean, I like Colby Cave a lot, but it's, it's not looking good. We can at least leave him signed, though. Um, again, Jimmy Cross is terrible. Connor McDavid will obviously be signed and placed into... Uh, the AHL. AHL Connor McDavid. But that's the situation that we're looking at. Um, we will also have Jace Howerluck. Jace Howerluck. Cross is quite possibly the worst player in the game. Mm. And then from there, after Howerluck, it gets into the top rated players. Okay. So not too much to do. I mean, Zemgis Gergensen's is going nowhere. You know, 
Ergensen's is going nowhere. We have Bailey signed. He is going nowhere. Then it's Larson, Verkunin, Mikhail Grigorenko, who I am worried about developing, but we can't lose him for nothing. Hmm. Just trying to look at the pure numbers of this. It's Larson, Verkunin, Grigorenko. No, somebody has to go, and it's going to be Valtteri Verkunin, who's the oldest of the bunch. So, um, we are going to bring back Johan Larson. We are going to bring back Mikhail Grigorenko, even if it means that we trade him. Ender, what's up, man? Uh, and then for the AHL, we can bring back Cali Yarncroke. Why not? And we can also bring back Logan Nelson, who's not bad, but has a bad, bad haircut. Can relate. All right. So for the most part, outside of a, a dreadfully barren right wing side, uh, I think we're pretty much good to go with a lot of the youth. We are going to have a trade or two to make. McElrath's going to have to go if he doesn't get a offer sheet, but... For the most part, I think we're looking good. My eye decides to be itchy as all hell. Uh, so Andre Makarov, we need to negotiate your contract. He wants a one-year deal. Just give it to him. That's fine. Uh, we wanted to keep Brandon Whitney. And we can go ahead and do that. Actually, Whitney, since I can renegotiate that deal, can I go three years at a max ELC? Because that would... Oh, no, it's the previous offer thing. I screwed myself a little bit there. And we're not going to sign Krogh right now. Uh, McElrath will stay qualified. Gautier LeDuc will be brought back. Just trying to sign him to a deal. Uh, and then Ludwig Bystrom, Bystrom, whatever you prefer. Try to bring him back too. Good from there. Right wing side, again, is brutally bad. Left wing side, let's try to keep Brett Bulmer. Two-way deal if we can. And then down the middle, Samgus Gergensens. I mean, if he keeps getting better... He keeps getting better, it would be worth it, but this was the game where if you start to sign people long-term, it can stunt their freaking development. A lot of these games work that way, from my recollection. Let's just give him two and a half for three years. It's fine. Cap space shouldn't be an issue anytime soon. Give him what the hell we look like. I will try to sign Johan Larson a little bit longer, though. Shouldn't affect it that much on a three-year deal, right? Your deal for Mikhail Grigorenko. Very good chance he's getting traded. Nelson. Let's try to keep you around. And Callie Yarncroak wants more money than I am willing to offer. I think it wouldn't matter because I need cap space, but it can affect his trade value, basically. So I'm glad we have a, uh, a course of action and a plan here for this team, especially... Given the fact that we want to try to make the playoffs next year, but we are going to go younger with a lot of this team. So I am not expecting the playoffs this upcoming season either. All things considered. And we lost Justin Falk on defense. Not the current St. Louis Blue, but the former member of the Minnesota Wild and a lot of other teams. But I'm intrigued to see who could be out there for free agents. I mean, we did have Patrick Kane, and then we traded him, which I still think somehow worked out for us in the short term. <laughs> so, all right. Do we have any free agents that can change our opinion on anything? Again, we're not going to go after RFAs, and the top one is ours anyway. But RFAs are a pain in the... Well, actually, you know what? Our freaking... Hold on. 
We don't need a goalie. Mahalik and Braswa, we don't need him. Defensively. Yeah, we don't need Harrison Rop. But Sebastian Kahlberg. That's a hell of a potential for Kahlberg. I don't know if he'd actually turn around, but I need a right wing. I do. So if I could land Sebastian Kohlberg as an RFA. Um, what is the current compensation? Anything under 1.4. Anything under 1.4. Would be good. So let's go with a one year, one way deal of 1.4 million. And uh, see if he can develop. Why not? Just under 1.4. See if the Habs match it. Left wing RFAs, Stevenson and Brock McGinn. I do not have space for left wingers currently. And then centers. I really don't have space for any centers either. I did see Tomas Hurdle there. Who's a four-star red, but we already have people in those spots, basically. So, if we look at UFA centers. Tuomo Rutu, Tyler Johnson, Kyle Turris. These would be one of the two to go after if we thought um, Grigorenko wouldn't make it, which we kind of do. Got options. I'll think about it. And that's the one guy that could kind of be like, yeah, trade Grigorenko. In terms of prospects, William Carlson, Lucas Sutter, there's really no one to force my hand to be like, yep, that guy's better than the guy that we already have. So, just whether or not we want Tyler Johnson. On the left, we really don't have space on the left. James Neal is available, but... I don't really see how that's going to happen for us. Thanks, Freeberg. Again, really nobody there to kind of force the issue of making me make a trade to clear up space. And then right wing side, TJ Oshi, Chris Stewart are the big names. We do need wingers on this team badly on that right hand side. In terms of prospects, Trent Malay, we drafted that guy. He's only a 47. That's abysmal. A couple of guys who might be able to make it, but for the most part, not really. Um, so we can just look for outright value. Oshi and Stewart both want kind of short-term deals, which isn't too bad. Imalu for the fourth line. Kyle Beach for the fourth line. Go with the redemption lines. Get a Lou and Beach on the team. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Shout out to Melker Carlson. That's a name I haven't thought about for a while. Chris Stewart's normally pretty good in these games. I need three right wingers for the NHL and then potentially one for the AHL should the Kahlberg deal go through. Um... So we are going to look to sign one Kyle Beach. We are also going to look to sign one Akeem Alou. And then we're going to go for the two bigger names that are out there. In TJ Oshi. And again, I can afford to spend more for these guys than most teams. We're also going to go for Chris Stewart. Up to about five and a half for Chris Stewart. Normally does pretty damn well in these games. Uh, defensively, we really don't have any space defensively. Falk, who we let go of. Mathot, Andy McDonald, Jake Muzzin. Nobody that we need, unless there's a really, really good prospect. And there is not. A couple of three and a half reds, more than a couple, but nobody that we need. And then goalie-wise, we were also good. 
Jake Allen is out there, but I'm going to put my trust in Makarov. In terms of potential, I think we're also good. Hello, Mr. Nuge Television. How are you, sir? How the heck are you? Break NHL again tonight? <laughs> I look forward to clips now on a daily basis of just NHL trying to get you to spike a controller. I think we're good, guys. I don't think we have to do too much. I really don't. Finally got elite edges, though. Hey, there you go. Esports ready. How much How much uh, pro-am did you grind? Well, TJ, so situation was the most overrated thing ever. The U.S. didn't even medal in that tournament. It was a cool moment. It was a cool moment. He had a really, really good single-headed performance. That's that's a good moment. Overrated, maybe, but it's a good moment. All right, let's see. Chris Stewart signs. Akeem Alou signs. Kyle Beach signs. We have not heard from TJ Yoshi. Kahlberg does not sign with us because Montreal matches the deal. But Oshi signed as well. Uh, meaning we have Oshi, Stewart, either Alou or Beach. One of them will be in the AHL, if not Mark Stone. I need one more AHL level right wing. And then we are good to go. One more AHL level right wing. Or one more NHL level right wing. We drop a lure beach down to the AHL. But um, I still have $33 million in cap space. Jesus Christ. Well, who's somebody old as hell that I can sign? Darren Hay. Oh, Bobby Robbins. Shout out to former Boston Bruin Bobby Robbins. As you know, this will take a minute. Go for James Neal. We don't need him. We don't need him. We got some younger guys. Leon Dreisaitl included in the system here. So we don't need him. But yeah, this is going to go up to about $14 million, chat. So you know the deal. Give me something to talk about. For the love of God. <laughs> for the love of God. Give me something to talk about. He can be the fourth right wing. That is currently... I'm not going to spend for James Neal. Put Leon Dreisaitl on the fourth line or James Neal himself on the fourth line. Absolutely not. When am I going back to Finland? No idea. Hopefully sometime in 2024, uh, but I cannot guarantee it. But I would love to go back. Um, again, it's weird to think I've been there three times in less than two years, um, but I do love it there. Most overrated, most underrated goalie. Here, let me think of 64 goalies at least, all at the same time. Come on, man. A better question is, hey, do you think this guy is overrated? Who would you consider for those categories? Carey Price is the correct answer, by the way. Thank you, Nooch. Fanatics year is coming in next year. It's been a tradition for the first year of a new deal to put alternates on hold. What alternates do you not wish would come back? God, I'd have to take a look at the uniform sets. How's the language barrier in Finland? Honestly, not bad. Most people there speak English. I mean, especially if you're like under the age of 50 years old, people speak English. It's fine. It sucks a little bit to be like, hi, do you speak English? Or can we speak in English? Um, yeah, that's a little bit embarrassing. But I'm working on it. Sin's much further ahead of me. But he also has a freaking Swedish girlfriend that lives in Finland. So, I mean, <laughs> he's able to pick up the language just fine. Um, that said, that said, I got asked what alternate I would drop. Um, first and foremost, that should be the Ducks full-time home jersey. Shout out to NHL uniforms, by the way. Greatest site on earth. Um, that should be the Ducks home jersey full-time. Their alternate. Go back to those colors. I like that Coyotes jersey a lot. Hope it comes back. Bruins is good. Buffalo's good. Uh, Calgary, ret retire that version of Blasty and just bring back the actual Blasty jersey from back in the day. Uh, Carolina's alternate, the red one, should be their full-time home jersey. Um, Colorado's alternate, I could take it or leave it. It's not bad, but it's not amazing to me. Columbus is goaded. Dallas, I'm indifferent about. I don't like it, but I know a lot of people do. Uh, burn that Oilers alternate jersey in a fire. Um, that is one of the worst jerseys of all time. Burn that Oilers jersey. Uh, the Kings are fine. Subway jerseys for Minnesota, they're fine. The jersey jersey, I'm indifferent about. It is what it is. Um, 
Islanders jersey I'm indifferent about. It's not great, but it's not bad. Um, bring back the Fisherman full-time. Uh, Philadelphia could do so much better for alternates. It's not the worst in the league. Pittsburgh's is great. St. Louis is great. Uh, Toronto's, a lot of people like it. I don't, but it is what it is. I'm indifferent about it. Canucks are goaded. Good, good, good. Yeah, so basically, um, Edmonton. <laughs> Get rid of that fucking third jersey if you're Edmonton because it's absolutely atrocious. Oilers is like Dallas's, but it's made by someone with eyes, basically. Yeah, that Oilers jersey is probably the worst jersey in the league. So, it's up there, at the very least. So, as the YouTube comments had a good new year. <laughs> I can actually count how far in advance we'd be. And yeah, this will probably end up being posted in freaking December. There's a decent chance, yeah. YouTube side's going to be behind. Happy holidays, everybody. Yeah, and what's going on. Oh, goodness. Hopefully NHL 24 editing speed is faster than this. Can we do another troll bait video? We can just make this that. Um, if you're an anti-vaxxer, you're a fucking idiot. Tampa shouldn't have held a parade in 2020. It was reckless and stupid and totally unnecessary. Uh, be like Liverpool Football Club, who did not hold one, um, even though they won the Premier League that year for the first time. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. What else do people get mad about? Your favorite hockey player sucks. Your favorite hockey team is even worse. Um, I don't give a fuck about your religious beliefs if you use them to put people down. Um, regardless of what your text says, you have no right to try and force said opinions on anyone else more than they have the right to force their opinions on you. Um, Patrice Bergeron doesn't suck. I don't give a damn about your kids. Um, hopefully by this time that you're watching this, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey have been married and live happily ever after. Um, what else do people get mad about? Blake Bortles was elite. Yep. Um, fuck the Jets. Not the Winnipeg variety, but... The NFL variety. I won't say moist 10 times, but I'll say it at least twice. Moist. Um, what else do people get mad about? Um, who's to say? What else people get mad about at this stage? Anyway, there we go. I think... Uh, no, also fuck the... White people. I agree. Fuck white people. Um... Tez didn't catch it. <laughs> Tom Brady never cheated. Just a bunch of sore fucking losers. Fuck the Colts. Um, Rex Ryan was a fucking weirdo. Um, and Santa Claus is your dad. 